Buckle up, space cadets. We're about to blast off on a cosmic joyride that will leave even the brightest stars in our Milky Way galaxy a bit jealous. If you've ever wondered what's really out there, beyond our sky, past our atmosphere, and over the rainbow, then you're in the right place. So grab your space helmets, tighten your asteroid belts, and prepare for a gravity-defying adventure through the universe. Three, two, one, liftoff. Image number one, 584, a spiral galaxy in the Virgo constellation. Nestled in the celestial tapestry of the Virgo constellation, NGC 5584, is a spiral galaxy that engages in a cosmic ballet 72 million light years away from our home planet, Earth. But what does it mean to be 72 million light years away? Imagine if you could ride a beam of light, it would take you 72 million years to get from Earth to NGC 5584. This galaxy is far from a random cluster of stars and cosmic dust. It's an intricate assembly of celestial bodies, and it has some truly unique features that make it a goldmine for astronomers. One remarkable characteristic is that NGC 5584 serves as a host galaxy for certain types of stars known as Cepheid variables. What are Cepheid variables, you ask? Imagine a star that pulses like a cosmic heartbeat. These stars expand and contract in a predictable pattern, making them extremely reliable cosmic clocks. Scientists have found these pulsating stars invaluable for calculating distances across the universe. When they blink, it's like they're sending a coded message that helps us understand the size and scale of the cosmos. But the wonder doesn't stop there. NGC 5584 is also a breeding ground for a special category of exploding stars known as Type Ia supernovae. These aren't your regular star explosions. Type Ia supernovae serve a very specific purpose for scientists. They're like cosmic mile markers that help us measure how fast the universe is expanding. This is monumental in understanding the past, present, and future of our universe. Did you know the rate of universal expansion wasn't always known? It was the study of these particular stars that provided the missing puzzle pieces to understand this critical aspect of cosmic evolution. This spectacular galaxy was observed through the combined lenses of Webb's NIRCAM, near-infrared camera and Hubble's WFC-3, Wide Field Camera 3. Each of these cameras has its own specialty. The near-infrared camera is superb at peering through dust and gas to give us a clearer view, while the Wide Field Camera 3 is like the Swiss army knife of astronomical cameras, versatile in capturing a wide range of information. When we put all this together, NGC 5584's location in the Virgo constellation its distance of about 72 million light years from Earth, and its rich population of Cepheid variables and type Ia supernovae. We're left with a celestial phenomenon that serves as a cosmic library for astronomers. It helps us unlock secrets about the universe's size, age, and rate of expansion, and all of this from a faraway galaxy that dances its eternal spiral dance in the deep recesses of space. Isn't it incredible how a distant spiral galaxy can tell us so much about our own place in the universe? Image number two, the North American Nebula, a cosmic landscape in the Cygnus constellation. Gaze up at the night sky, and you may just catch a celestial spectacle that resembles a familiar shape, the North American Nebula. Officially cataloged as NGC 7000, this unique formation isn't a galaxy or a star cluster, but rather a nebula, an enormous cloud of gas and dust in space. Fascinatingly, it sits in the Cygnus constellation, which means swan, and often stands out in the summer night sky. So what is a nebula, precisely? Imagine a cosmic mist or fog where stars can be born or where they go to die. This is what a nebula is, a nursery and graveyard for stars, all in one. Now, the North America nebula isn't just any nebula. It's what scientists call an emission nebula. 
Here's a fun question. Have you ever seen neon lights glow? That glow is similar to how emission nebulae like NGC 7000 work. They light up because the gases inside them get energized and excited, emitting their own light, rather than reflecting the light of nearby stars. For those curious minds wondering how it got its unique name, look closely, or better yet, take a peek through a telescope. The nebula's shape astonishingly resembles that of the North American continent. But remember, this isn't a small misty cloud hovering above our planet. It's a sprawling cosmic entity located in the Milky Way galaxy, our very own cosmic neighborhood. Did you know this incredible cosmic cloud is actually a part of our own Milky Way galaxy? What does that mean for us? It's like finding out that a world-famous artist painted a masterpiece in your own hometown. This celestial entity offers a closer look at the complexities and mysteries that our galaxy holds, right from the comfort of Earth's backyard. The North America Nebula is best observed through specialized astronomical tools. It was through such telescopic marvels that we were able to categorize it as an emission nebula in the first place. The scientific observations have placed it within the Cygnus constellation. What does it mean for a celestial object to be in a particular constellation? Think of constellations as imaginary lines connecting stars, almost like dot-to-dot -dot drawings in the sky. The Cygnus constellation acts as a backdrop for the North American nebula, providing a celestial context for its location. Why is studying something like the North American nebula important? Well, Nebulae like NGC 7000 serve as cosmic laboratories. Scientists can observe how stars are born, how they evolve, and how they meet their cosmic fate just by studying these celestial clouds. Imagine trying to understand how a tree grows, lives, and eventually decays without ever looking at a forest. In a similar way, nebulae give us clues about the broader life cycles of stars, which in turn provides crucial information about the universe itself. So there you have it, the North America Nebula, or NGC 7000, a sprawling emission nebula situated in the Cygnus constellation within our Milky Way galaxy. Its fascinating shape and luminous qualities tell an extraordinary tale of cosmic birth, life, and demise right here from our corner in the universe. It's not just a remarkable point of light in the sky, it's a vibrant chapter in the ever-unfolding story of space. What more could this intriguing nebula reveal about the mysteries of our universe? Image number three, firestorm of star creation in NGC 604. If you thought the celestial neighborhoods we know, like the Orion Nebula in our own Milky Way galaxy, were the ultimate spots for star formation, prepare to be amazed. NGC 604, a mammoth star-forming region located in a nearby galaxy, takes the concept of a stellar nursery to a whole new level. First off, let's get situated. NGC 604 isn't in our Milky Way galaxy, it's 3 million light years away. But what does being 3 million light years away really mean? If you hitched a ride on a light beam, yes, the fastest thing in the universe, it would still take you 3 million years to reach NGC 604. Situated in the Triangulum constellation, this nebula is what astronomers refer to as an H2 region or emission nebula. Confused? Don't be. An H2 region is simply a fancy name for an area where a lot of hydrogen gas gets excited and glows, kind of like the neon sign of a diner glowing in the night. Now let's dive into what makes NGC 604 so incredibly special. This star factory is like the Orion Nebula on cosmic steroids. Imagine a cloud of glowing gases stretching 1,300 light years across. To give you a perspective, that's nearly 100 times the size of the Orion Nebula. Think about the size of a regular football field and then imagine one that is 100 times larger. That's how staggeringly big NGC 604 is. And within this colossal cloud, there's a real firestorm of star birth taking place. It's home to more than 200 brilliant blue stars, 
each one a youngster in cosmic terms, having been formed only about three million years ago. How young is that, astronomically speaking? Well, consider that our Sun is about 4.6 billion years old. These stars in NGC 604 are like infants compared to the Sun. But why are these stars blue, you ask? Blue stars are like the speedsters of stellar evolution. They live fast and die young, burning at higher temperatures and exhausting their fuel much more quickly than their more leisurely yellow or red counterparts. This makes them exceptionally bright and, yes, very blue. In contrast, the Orion Nebula, which is somewhat of a celestial celebrity in its own right, can boast only four such bright central stars. So when you look at NGC 604, you're not just looking at another nebula, you're looking at a turbocharged star-making machine. But what does all of this mean? Why should we care about some distant nebula in another galaxy? Well, places like NGC 604 serve as cosmic laboratories for scientists. By studying this dynamic area of star formation, they can gain insights into the birth, life, and death of stars fundamental processes that have been shaping the universe for billions of years. Isn't it intriguing to think that by examining the distant heavens, we are also delving into the ancient past and possibly the future of our own cosmic home? So there it is, NGC 604, a behemoth of a star nursery, tucked away in the Triangulum constellation three million light years from Earth. It's not just a pinprick of light in the night sky. It's a testament to the unimaginable scale and activity of our universe. What other untold secrets might such a celestial dynamo hold? Image 4, the last act of a star, zooming into the Dumbbell Nebula with the James Webb Space Telescope. Picture, a stage where the final act of a captivating drama is unfolding. The Dumbbell Nebula, also formerly known as Messier 27, or M27 for short, plays the role of the Grand Theater. But this is no ordinary stage. It's located in the constellation Vulpecula, over 1,200 light-years from Earth. That's so far that if you were on the fastest commercial airplane, it would take you over two trillion years to get there. On this cosmic stage, an aging star is giving its last performance, shedding its outer layers in an astonishing kaleidoscope of glowing gas. What's so special about this nebula, you ask? For starters, it has the honor of being the first planetary nebula ever discovered, way back in 1764 by French astronomer Charles Messier. Wait, let's pause for a second. You might be wondering what a planetary nebula is and why it even bears the term planetary when it has nothing to do with planets. In simple terms, a planetary nebula is like the retirement party for stars similar in size to our sun. After spending billions of years shining brightly, these stars puff out their outer layers, creating an eye-catching spectacle of glowing gas. But don't let the term aging fool you. In the universe, old can be relative. Even an elderly star can create something fresh and new, and in this case, a magnificent cloud of light and color. This spectacle is so grand that the James Webb Space Telescope has taken a close-up image, capturing a flurry of what appear to be glowing knots of gas streaking through space like cosmic fireworks. You may be asking, why is the gas glowing? Well, the core of the dying star, still intensely hot, sends out waves of radiation that hit the expelled gas layers. These layers then light up like a neon sign, a celestial spectacle that we get to observe as the brilliant Dumbbell Nebula. Why do we care about the last hurrah of some distant star? Because studying how stars end their lives provides clues about the cosmic circle of life. It's much like studying the life cycle of a flower from seed to full bloom than to wilting and forming new seeds. Stars go through similar cycles, and by studying their various stages, especially these final dramatic ones, we get a comprehensive understanding of the forces that have shaped and continue to shape 
our universe. So, what questions does the Dumbbell Nebula beg us to ask? Could there be other yet-to-be-discovered planetary nebulae that outshine this 1764 debutante in terms of complexity and grandeur? How many more celestial retirement parties are waiting to be found? And what could they teach us about the universe's never-ending cycle of birth, life, and rebirth? In summary, the Dumbbell Nebula, located in the constellation Volpecula, some 1,200 light-years away, offers us a front-row seat to the final act in the life of a star. Captured in meticulous detail by the James Webb Space Telescope, this cloud of radiant gas serves as a cosmic lesson in both the beauty and inevitability of change. Image number five, the star-making workshop in our cosmic backyard, a close look at Barnard's galaxy's Hubble Vi. Imagine gathering around a campfire, the flames curling and dancing in the night sky, each flicker and twist a small but crucial part of a larger spectacle. Now take that earthly image and scale it up, way up. We're talking about a scene that unfolds not in your backyard, but in the distant reaches of space, Specifically in Barnard's Galaxy, also known by its catalog names NGC 6822, Hubble V, and IRAS 19421, 1455. This galaxy is like our cosmic neighbor, situated just 2 million light years away in the constellation Sagittarius. It hosts a remarkable region that looks uncannily like those campfire flames, but in reality, it's a prolific factory where stars are born. This region, captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, isn't merely decorative. Its vibrant gas clouds and clusters of shining young stars are like a living laboratory for astronomers. Here, in this giant star factory, stars are born from clouds of gas and dust, much like a blacksmith forges metal from the raw materials of the Earth. The entire nebula spans approximately 200 light years in diameter, and its shape is rather irregular like a painter's palette splashed with the hues of creation. But what makes this place really grab our attention? Well, for starters, it shows us what the baby pictures of stars might look like. This isn't a casual term. The stars we see here are essentially newborns in cosmic terms, and they shine so brightly they illuminate the surrounding gases. At the lower part of the nebula, there is a dense cluster of these baby stars, creating a glow like a pocket of fireflies on a summer evening. In contrast, the nebula has a faint tail of gas at its top, as if it were exhaling, a trail almost like the smoke rising from those campfire flames. Now you might be asking, why should we even care about some distant star-making region in another galaxy? Here's the deal. Understanding how stars form today offers us a glimpse into how they might have formed in the early universe. The methods of star formation we witness here could very well be similar to those that prevailed billions of years ago. That's like peering into a history book of the cosmos, except this book is written in light gas and gravitational forces. Let's ponder some interesting questions. How similar or different is star formation in Barnard's galaxy compared to our Milky Way? Are the conditions there ripe for the creation of solar systems like ours? Could this nebula hold the key to understanding how galaxies like ours came to be? So the next time you sit around a campfire, take a moment to consider the incredible nebula in Barnard's galaxy. Remember that those seemingly distant celestial phenomena may not be so different from our earthly experiences. Whether it's a campfire or a nebula, both are creations of natural forces, and both have stories to tell. In the case of Hubble Vive, it's a story penned in the universal language of physics, a tale of creation that could echo the conditions of a younger universe.
Number six, a tantalizing veil, the Cygnus Loop's intriguing mysteries. Picture a massive explosion, a burst so forceful it could annihilate an entire star. This isn't science fiction, but a cosmic event that occurred around 5,000 to 8,000 years ago. The aftermath of such a spectacle is what we now see as the Veil Nebula, also known as the Cygnus Loop. Situated in the Cygnus constellation, this celestial marvel is a mere 1,500 light years away from Earth. It's the kind of place that makes you rethink the very scales of space and time. What you're looking at in images of the Veil Nebula is not just a cool color show, it's a supernova remnant. That's a fancy term for what's left after a star goes boom, really, really big. So big, in fact, that the debris created by the explosion has been expanding for thousands of years, forming a colossal curtain-like structure in space. It's a relic from one of the universe's most dramatic events, a supernova. But what's a supernova, you ask? Imagine a firework, but on a cosmic scale, with a brightness that can outshine entire galaxies for a brief moment. The Veil Nebula's intricate patterns and colors are not just eye candy. They're hints to the incredibly complex processes going on here. Think about the way food coloring swirls in water, making intricate patterns before it fully mixes. Similarly, the Veil Nebula contains a dizzying array of elements like hydrogen, helium, and heavier metals all swirled together in a dance directed by the laws of physics. When these elements collide with the remnants of the exploded star, they glow in different colors. So the colors you see aren't just pretty, they're actually clues to what the nebula is made of. But why should this nebula, a leftover from a long-gone explosion, matter to us? Well, by studying remnants like the Cygnus Loop, scientists can learn about the life cycles of stars, including what happens when they meet their explosive ends. This knowledge could be essential in understanding our own cosmic history and future. What were the conditions that led to such a massive explosion? Can this happen to stars in our own celestial backyard? What does this tell us about the building blocks of the universe itself? As you ponder these questions, imagine a fabric so fine yet so complex that it takes thousands of years to weave each thread. In this celestial fabric, every color and pattern holds a clue to a cosmic event of unimaginable scale. This is what makes the Veil Nebula so tantalizing. It's not just a picture, but a page out of the universe's diary, written in a language we're still learning to understand. So when you look up at the night sky and think about all those stars twinkling back at you, remember the Veil Nebula. Its complex dance of colors and patterns could be telling the story of those very stars you see, how they might end up one day, and what might remain to tell their stories for eons to come. Number seven, peering into the heart of the Crab Nebula, a cosmic ballet of matter and antimatter. When you think of fast, you might picture a cheetah sprinting or a sports car zooming past. But what if we could go so fast that it's nearly the speed of light itself? That's precisely what's happening deep within the Crab Nebula, located in the Taurus constellation and roughly 6,500 light years away from us. This marvel is not just any star, but a rotating neutron star, about as big as Manhattan, but with a mass greater than the sun. Let's go back in time to 1054 AD. Imagine a clear, sunny day, and then suddenly, boom, a star so bright it could be seen during daylight appears in the sky. Chinese astronomers were utterly bewildered. Fast forward to today, and we now know that the remnants of that dazzling explosion are what we call the Crab Nebula also known as Messier 1. The Crab Nebula is no ordinary celestial object. It's a supernova remnant, the leftovers of a colossal explosion of a star. Think of it like the embers left in a bonfire after a massive firework show. But what makes it even more fascinating is its central neutron star, commonly referred to as the Crab Pulsar. To understand what a pulsar is, picture a spinning top. 
This top isn't just rotating, it's spinning at breakneck speed, emitting powerful jets of matter and antimatter propelled almost to the speed of light. Matter and antimatter are like cosmic twins, similar but opposite. When they meet, they can cancel each other out in a flash of energy. Thanks to the watchful eyes of the James Webb Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope, we've captured this awe-inducing dance of matter and antimatter. But what could be causing this rapid spinning and high-speed ejection of particles? Neutron stars like the Crab Pulsar form when massive stars exhaust their fuel and collapse under their own gravity, leading to a burst of spinning energy. Imagine spinning a basketball on your finger. If you suddenly made the ball smaller but kept its mass, it would spin faster and faster. That's a glimpse into the physics of a neutron star. As intriguing as it sounds, why does this nebula, light years away, matter to us here on Earth? By examining the Crab Nebula, scientists gain crucial insights into the end stages of star life and perhaps even the forces that hold the universe together. What happened to the star before it exploded? What kind of elements were forged in that ancient furnace? And how do matter and antimatter behave under such extreme conditions? These questions are not just for astronomers, but for anyone curious about our place in the vast cosmic story. In essence, the Crab Nebula is like a cosmic detective story, revealing clues about the lives and deaths of stars, the physics of unimaginable speeds, and the delicate balance of matter and antimatter. Each observation adds another piece to the puzzle, another note to the intricate symphony of our universe. So, the next time you look at the night sky, know that you're seeing the afterglow of cosmic events so powerful they've captivated human imagination for nearly a millennium. Image number 8, NGC 604, the colossal nursery of stars in galaxy M33. Picture a place so distant, even its light takes millions of years to reach us. And yet, through the powerful lens of the Webb Space Telescope, we are granted a seat in the cosmic theater to observe NGC 604, a colossal star-making factory located within the spiral galaxy known as Messier 33. But what does this mean for the untrained eye? Imagine observing a campfire from miles away and still seeing each individual spark flicker. Now, imagine that campfire is three million light years away, sitting in the far-off constellation of Triangulum. In case you're wondering, Messier 33 isn't just another galaxy, it's one of our nearest galactic neighbors. Yet even at three million light years away, near is a relative term in the cosmic arena. As for NGC 604, it's a type of nebula, Think of a nebula as a cloud in outer space where stars are born. And not just any cloud, but one that emits its own light, classifying it as an emission nebula. Moreover, it's an H2 region, which means it's composed mostly of hydrogen gas. Why is that significant? Hydrogen is the building block of stars, and an H2 region is essentially a massive nursery where future stars come to life. So what makes NGC 604 exceptional? the sheer scale of its star-creating capabilities, for starters. Envision a football field, then envision 100 of them, that still wouldn't capture the enormous expanse of this nebula. The nebula holds the secret to the birth of hundreds of brilliant young stars, each one just a few million years old, infants by astronomical standards. What could be going on in this incredible star factory? Imagine a space where gas clouds compress under gravity, heating up until the pressure ignites a new star. It's like squeezing a sponge until it becomes a diamond, except on a cosmic scale. And each of these sparkling new stars contributes to the nebula's radiant glow, making it a spectacle worth viewing even from millions of light years away. What questions does the observation of NGC 604 in Messier 33 raise? Could the processes taking place there mimic those of the early universe? offering clues to how our own Milky Way might have evolved.
What sorts of elements are forming in this astronomical crucible? And could they eventually find their way to us? These are tantalizing questions, not only for experts in astronomy, but for anyone captivated by the mysteries of the universe. To sum it up, NGC 604 is not merely a distant cloud of gas and dust. It's a dynamic, glowing, and active space of creation on a massive scale. Thanks to advances in technology and telescopes like the web, we're able to witness cosmic phenomena like this one, a vivid illustration of the life cycle of stars unfolding in real time. Well, given the three million light year distance, more like a time capsule view of events that transpired long before humans walked the earth. When we gaze upon such marvels, we're not just spectators, we're cosmic detectives, piecing together the clues of how everything in the universe is interconnected. Image 9, oxygen-rich supernova, the ghostly echoes of a stellar explosion in N132d. If you were to travel back in time around 3,000 years, you might witness the astonishing spectacle of a star reaching its explosive end. Picture a celestial firework that outshines entire galaxies for a brief moment. But let's fast forward to today, where we see not the explosion, but its ghostly remains thanks to the keen eye of the Webb Space Telescope. These haunting vestiges belong to a supernova remnant named N132d. But where exactly is this ancient stellar graveyard located? And why should we be interested in something that's long gone? Situated in the large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy to our own Milky Way, N132d lies approximately 170,000 light years away. It resides in the constellation Dorado, a cosmic backdrop that adds another layer to the mystery. Satellite galaxy might sound complex, but think of it as a neighborhood in the broader cosmic city that includes our Milky Way. Now, you might be wondering, what's a supernova remnant? When a star explodes in a supernova, it doesn't just vanish. It leaves behind a cloud of gas and dust, a celestial fingerprint of its life and death. This particular fingerprint, N132d, is rich in oxygen. What makes an oxygen-rich supernova special? Well, imagine if fireworks left behind not just smoke, but valuable materials like gold or platinum. Oxygen, in the context of the universe, is a precious element. It's the stuff you and I breathe, and it's a critical component of water. So if N132d is rich in oxygen, does that mean this was a unique type of star that exploded? Could remnants like N132d hold the key to understanding the evolution of elements essential to life as we know it? What if this ancient star was once like our sun? Or even more intriguing, what if it was different in ways that could reveal new types of stars we haven't even imagined? The snapshot taken by the Webb Space Telescope gives us more than just a remarkable view of this distant object. It provides critical data for scientists. By studying how the remnants are dispersed, the kind of elements that are present, and their interactions with the surrounding space, we gain insights into the life cycle of stars and the creation of elements. Remember, elements like oxygen weren't always abundant. They are the results of cosmic processes that take millions or even billions of years. N132d serves as a testament to such processes, immortalized in a haunting tableau of color and form. The term local universe might sound like an oxymoron. How can something so vast be described as local? But in the grand tapestry of the universe, 170,000 light years is relatively close. That's akin to having a mysterious ancient relic not in a distant land but right in your backyard, waiting to be explored. N132d isn't just a smudge of colors on a telescope's lens. It is a monumental cosmic event frozen in time and space a complex tapestry of elements that once formed a star and may well become part of new stars, planets, and possibly even life forms in the future. By scrutinizing this ancient relic, we aren't merely stargazers, 
we become cosmic archaeologists, sifting through the material remains of the universe to understand the grand story of space, time, and matter. Each piece of data, each glimpse of light from the past, adds a paragraph to an ongoing cosmic tale, one that we are just beginning to read. Image 10, the Cygnus Loop, the 15000 year echo of a star's dramatic exit. Imagine a sky theater where the final act of a star's life unfurls. What would the encore look like? Would it vanish without a trace or leave behind an unforgettable imprint? In the Cygnus Loop, we find the answer in an otherworldly panorama that has been echoing through space for about 15,000 years. But where is this celestial amphitheater and what can it tell us? Located a mere 1,500 light-years away in the constellation Cygnus, the Cygnus Loop is a breathtaking spectacle. Think of constellations as different rooms in a grand cosmic museum, each displaying unique wonders, and Cygnus is the room hosting this magnificent display. Now, 1,500 light-years might sound like an unimaginable distance, but in astronomical terms, it's like a neighbor just down the cosmic block. When we say nebula, we're talking about a massive cloud of gas and dust in space. This particular nebula, officially cataloged as NGC 6960 and also known as SNR 074, 0085 is no ordinary one. It's a supernova remnant. Confused by these terms? Let's break it down. A supernova is the colossal explosion that occurs when a star has reached the end of its life cycle. The remnant is what's left behind after this explosion. Picture a fireworks display so intense it leaves a glowing, smoky outline in the sky. So, what exactly are we looking at when we see this section of the Cygnus Loop? It's like peering at a freeze frame from an ancient film reel, capturing a moment from a staggering 15,000 years ago. This was when a star underwent its own dramatic demise, bursting into a supernova. The loop is the boundary of that explosion, still expanding like ripples from a pebble thrown into a pond. Only this pebble was a star, and the pond is the fabric of space itself. The image shows only a small part of the Cygnus Loop, but even that sliver is six times the diameter of the full moon when viewed from Earth. Imagine the scale of the entire thing. What's even more mind-boggling is that what we see now is like an echo of an event that happened millennia ago. Could similar echoes from other, more ancient cataclysms be traveling through space even as you read this? And what would it take to capture them? Being part of our Milky Way galaxy, the Cygnus Loop offers a fascinating perspective on our local universe. And while 15,000 years might sound like a long time, it's just a blink in the cosmic timeline. What caused that star to explode in the first place? What elements were formed in its cataclysmic death? Could any of those elements eventually find their way to Earth, or have they already? These are not just musings. They are questions that scientists actively ponder as they study phenomena like the Cygnus Loop. Such astronomical features serve as living laboratories, offering clues to not just the nature of stars, but also to the workings of the universe at large. So the next time you look up at the night sky, consider this. Each twinkling light could be a star at some stage of its life. And somewhere out there, another Cygnus Loop could be forming, ready to tell its own tale in another 15,000 years. The Cygnus Loop is not merely a snapshot, it's a frame in a never-ending cosmic film, one that we are only just beginning to understand. Wow, 
What a cosmic journey that was, right? If you had as much fun exploring the galaxy with us as we did with you, then don't forget to hit that like button. Got questions or thoughts about today's adventure? Share your wonderments or even your space jokes in the comments below. We love hearing from our fellow astronauts. If you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss out on our next celestial field trip. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. But wait, there's more. If you're hungry for even more spectacular content, click on the video on your screen right now to continue the voyage. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies and may your curiosity be as infinite as the universe. See you in our next episode.